I'm going to cover non-forfeiture options with whole life insurance policies as you'll need to know them for your life insurance pre-licensing exam. Okay, so non-forfeiture options have to do with whole life insurance policies. This is because there's cash value. So what a non-forfeiture option is, it's essentially the, an option that you can exercise when the policy is finished, whether you surrender it or it lapses or you cancel it or whatever it could be. There are a few different options that people have because there is money available in the cash value. So it's not like that money just disappears. Okay, now there's three options. There's cash surrender value, there's reduced paid up insurance, and then there's extended term. Those are the three non-forfeiture options. By the way, if you find value in this video, please just subscribe to the channel and turn on post notifications. Share this with anyone else you know may, who may be studying for their life insurance license course, and reach out to me if you'd like to work with me. We provide leads to all of our agents and we work 100% over the phone from home. So reach out if you'd like more information. Now the first one, cash surrender value. What that means is if you have a whole life policy for life insurance, it has cash value that builds up over time. So there is a cash portion of it. So say after five years, you have $5,000 in cash value that you can access if you would like to borrow against it with a policy loan, you can take a loan against the money, or you could surrender the policy for that whole value of that whole $5,000 value. That's one of the options, cash surrender value. Now, if you do surrender and you take all the cash out, then you no longer have a policy in force and there is a small surrender charge that's associated with that. It's usually very minimal. Um, and then also though, if your cash value is more than the amount of premiums you paid in, you have to pay tax on the excess amount as ordinary income tax, right? Because you've actually gained money on it. So. Those are the things that you want to know about for the cash surrender value. So say I have a policy, I've had it for five years. I have a $5,000 of cash value in there. I can surrender it. I can surrender that $5,000 and take it. The whole thing, I no longer have a policy in force. I can't reinstate the policy, okay? If that $5,000 is more than what I've paid in, then I have to pay tax on the difference. So say I only paid $4,500 in premiums and I have $5,000 in cash value, I have to pay income tax on the $500 difference, okay? Um, and the surrender charges apply to that, which is very minimal. Now the next one I'm gonna talk about is called extended term. So say I have a uh, $50,000 whole life policy, okay, a $50,000 face amount, and I have $5,000 of cash value in there, and I wanna exercise the extended term uh, non-forfeiture option. What this means is that I am, uh, I'm gonna get a term policy for $50,000. So that you, you take a term policy out equal to the face amount of the permanent life insurance policy and the cash value pays for that policy for however long it will pay for. So say I have a $50,000 whole life policy with $5,000 in cash value and I wanna exercise the extended term. Let's say that that $5,000 would just buy me like, you know, 12 years of a $50,000 whole life policy, then I can, I mean a $50,000 term policy, then I can say I wanna exercise the extended term option with this cash value and no longer make payments on the policy. So in that case, I'd have an extended term policy and um, I don't know if, if this is confusing to you guys, but essentially what we're doing is we're taking the money that we have in the cash value and we're using that to prepay for a term policy and however long that cash value prepays for that term policy is however long that you have the term policy in force. And after that, the policy's over. Now, you would have an, ex uh, the, the last one I wanna go over is the reduced paid up option. So the reduced paid up option, what that lets you do, say you have the same $5,000 in cash value, you say, hey, I wanna take that $5,000 and purchase a paid up whole life policy with that. So say it goes down to like a, you know, $8,000 permanent whole life policy that you no longer have to make premiums on. So you say, I'm gonna stop making my payments and I'm gonna take a reduced paid up option right here and I'm gonna use that $5,000 to purchase a $8,000 whole life policy that's gonna keep earning dividends, it's gonna keep you know keep gaining ca dividends if it's in that type of policy, it's gonna keep gaining cash value and you never have to make another premium payment on it. So you're taking that $5,000 cash value and you're doing a lump sum single premium payment on a whole life policy. So some whole life policies you pay monthly, some you pay annually, some you can pay just for 10 years and everything's paid up. This is for a single premium. So saying here's that $5,000 in 
cash value. I'm going to use that to pay for a whole life policy. Whatever that amount covers to have it fully paid up, I'm never going to have to make another premium on it again, another premium payment on it again, and it's going to keep increasing in cash value. So um, that's it. It remains in force until maturity. That's the basics. So those are the three non-forfeiture options we have. The cash surrender value, we have extended term, and we have the reduced paid up option. If you have any questions, just drop it in the comments below. I'm more than happy to help you with this. And uh, check out this next video coming up. You don't want to miss this. This is going to break down every single type of life insurance policy that you're going to need to know for your life insurance licensing exam. And it's going to cover the type of policies that these non-forfeiture options actually have to do with. So when it gets to the whole life policy, that's where you want to pay attention for this. Thank you.